What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Carl's Bait and Tackle Tips and Tricks video. I'm Matt from SB Fishing TV and today we're going to be doing a little bit of winter Texas rig fishing. But before we get out on the water, I figured I got to put an order in for some new baits on Shop Carl's. And something that really surprised me here was that I saved about 12 bucks just from joining Carl's Club. They're doing a 30 day free trial right now, so if you click that link down in the description below, you can also get that free trial. You can cancel it at any time. And not only do they have awesome baits on here, they also have rods, reels, they have terminal tackle. They have awesome Christmas sweaters, just like this one. So again, click that link down in the description below. I'm gonna put this order in. I got five different types of soft plastics we're gonna be talking about today. Make sure that you guys stay tuned. I'll see you out on the water. guys so after quickly receiving my package from Carl's we are out on the water and we're gonna go over how I'm gonna fish these baits and I really quickly want to go over them with you show you what I'm working with and we're gonna get into Texas rigging in the winter so first up we have the hustler worm from Carl's now this is just a bass fishing staple it's a seven inch ribbon tail I got it in June bug and this works really well in clean water to dirty water you really cannot go wrong with throwing these year-round so another bait that I throw year-round it's another worm is the Guggen Baits Slim Shake. So this finesse styled worm works winter, summer, spring, fall, it doesn't matter what time of year it is. You can throw it on the shaky head, you can Texas rig it, you can drop shot it, you can throw it like a wacky worm. Fish just love this finesse styled presentation, especially when you're finding it to be a bit of a tough day. I can promise you if you throw a finesse worm like the Slim Shake on, you are gonna get bit. So we've got a couple creature baits or crawl style baits as well. We have the Vile Bug from Biospawn. Now this is a really cool bait to throw in the winter because it doesn't have an abundant amount of action to it. So the claws on here are flanged so they do get a bit of a kick, but once that bait gets down to the bottom, it rests there and sits and you can just dead stick it without having to worry about having too much action. It's especially great to throw in the winter. Can you hear me? So after the bio bug from Biospawn, I've got some crawls from Carl's. This is the Haas crawl. This one's gonna have a little bit more action than the Vile Bug. It's gonna dance around a little bit more, but you know, fish don't always want something with little action in the winter. Sometimes they do want something that's gonna move around a little bit more. Keep that in mind when you're out in the winter. Usually I'll start with something with very little action that I can dead stick or just slowly drag across the bottom. But if you're not getting bit, don't be afraid to try something that is gonna move just a tiny bit more like the Haas crawl there. Last but not least, We've got some Senkos. This is a five inch Gary Yamamoto Senko. Really great to just drag that thing around. It's perfect to dead stick. Little to no action once that thing's on the bottom, but the wintertime fish seem to love it. So now that we've gone over these baits, I'm gonna Texas rig a couple of them. We're gonna see if we can catch some bass on all of these and I'm gonna get into how I'm gonna fish them in the wintertime on a Texas rig. Let's go catch some fish. So we have two Texas rig setups tied up right now. I have one with 20 pound fluorocarbon and a 3 8 ounce tungsten weight. And this setup is 15 pound fluorocarbon to a quarter ounce tungsten weight. This is a seven foot medium heavy. This is a seven six medium heavy. Both rods are perfect for Texas rigging. I like the seven six if I'm flipping around tighter cover like this in front of me. And you know, you're gonna need something a little bit more powerful to pull these bigger fish out of the cover like this. But for more open water presentations, whether you're fishing points or just flats or deeper drop offs, the seven foot medium heavy with 15 pound fluorocarbon works great. So we're gonna start off with two different style baits here. I'm gonna rig the 15 pound fluorocarbon up with a slim shake and I'm gonna put a hoss crawl on the other rod with a 20 pound fluorocarbon. Went ahead and rigged up the hoss crawl on the bigger setup that I'm throwing around today. It's a 3 8 ounce tungsten weight with 20 pound fluorocarbon. And we are just gonna be dragging this thing on the bottom. So I'm gonna cast it out and just look for a bite on the initial fall. So sometimes these fish are gonna be a little bit fired up or you're just gonna get lucky and drop it right in front of one's face. But for the most part, the bite's gonna come when this bait's being dragged along the bottom. So you're just making slow sweeps with your rod like this. You really wanna bump it into any sort of cover that you can find. And then when you do find the cover, if you can pop it over it or just bump it into it a few times and then let it sit there, a lot of times you're gonna catch fish that way. Here we go. Oh, woohoo, 
First fish of the day. All right, guys, first fish of the day, caught it on the hoss crawl. I pitched it along a break line here where it goes from like three feet down to six, and I pitched it right on top, and I was slowly dragging it across that break line, and this fish picked up that hoss crawl. Nice little pound and a half fish. Not bad for 40 degree water. So when I'm pitching a Texas rig, it doesn't matter what weight size or what it is that I'm throwing, I always cast out, and I'm letting it sink all the way to the bottom. You wanna keep a really good eye on your line because a lot of times you'll see the bite in the line before it hits. You want to reel down to the bait, and if you don't feel anything on the other end, that's when you're going to start your presentation back to the boat. So I'll usually reel out all the slack, and I'll give it a couple hops like this, and then you want to let it sit there again. Usually the fish are going to hit it when it's sitting down there on the bottom. You want to play around with how long you're letting it sit before you move it. Sometimes those fish like it just being completely dead sticked, and I mean not even hopping the bait, but just dragging it along the bottom like that, and then letting it sit. The colder the water temperatures get, usually the longer you're going to want to let that bait sit there. Uh, the fish are really lethargic in this cold water. They don't need to eat a lot. They usually don't eat more than you know once a day, sometimes bigger fish even less. So you need to keep in mind how little these fish are eating and you need to present that bait in a manner in which that they're going to want it. So sometimes you're going to have to let it sit there for 30 seconds. Sometimes you're going to let it have to sit there for you know a minute. It's just something you really need to play around with and kind of figure out what kind of mood the fish are in that day. Something else you want to keep in mind in the winter is bait size. So I'll usually stick with something creature bait wise, three to four inches. I usually don't like to go too much bigger than that. And for worms, depending on what I'm doing, if I'm Texas rigging, usually like that six to seven inch range, but sometimes I like to cut them down to four or five inches. It's just something else that if you're not getting bit, if you downsize your bait, Usually you can pick up a few more fish or at least get a couple more bites and figure out what's going on. Fish love vertical cover. It's a lot easier for fish to move up and down vertical cover than say, go up and down a massive flat. So if you have a you know, 30 yard flat that it's 10 feet here and then it's three feet up top and they wanna go feed, they need to move that 30 yards all the way up to the flat to feed. Whereas if they're on vertical cover, they may only need to move 10 feet from 15 to 5 and they're exerting a lot less energy so that's why wintertime fishing if you can find good vertical cover like bridges like this or if you can find good standing timber those are both really good areas to throw a Texas rig around. Alright you guys that's where I'm going to end this one off. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button on Carl's Bait and Tackle. Hope you learned a little bit on Texas rigging in the winter. Hope you get out there catch some fish. Take it easy.